In this module, we take our understanding of cost behavior and the CVP income statement, and we use that to develop what's called the cost volume profit model. This model is very useful to managers in predicting what the profit would be when we increase the amount of activities or the volume of activities, such as sales or production, and we understand how those costs will relate to that level of sales activity or production activity. So this model we use, first of all, to predict the sales that we need to break even. That is, cover all my fixed costs and all my variable costs. Then we use the model to predict how much we need in sales in order to earn a certain target net income. Well, in this module, now we're going to look at the cost volume profit model. We're going to examine the five components of this model. We're going to talk about the contribution margin and how it is calculated and expressed. We're going to determine break even point. That is that level of sales at which I cover all my costs. Now, keep in mind, my costs now are variable or fixed. I've been able to break all the costs in the company into those costs that are variable and those costs that are fixed. And we're going to then look later on at sales required to earn a target net income. So to begin with, again, this is a bit of a review. Cost volume profit analysis is the study of how cost changes as volume changes and the effect those changes have on a company's profits. So understanding this is so important to managers and their role in profit planning. Managers use this information to set the selling price. They'll change the selling price, see what happens with the cost, and look at the effect it has on profits. It also, for marketing people, has important information on what product mix we should be using the product that contributes the highest contribution. And also the production people in maximizing production facilities. Now there are five components. First of all, the volume or level of activity. Now let's, most often we're gonna be talking sales, but it could be production. Then we express unit selling price and unit variable costs are the next two components. The third one are the fixed costs that we have to cover. And then in the next module, we're going to look at the effect of sales mix on this module. Now, again, this is a management accounting module we're dealing with the futures so it's not really exact this is a, around that we are making some assumptions here <clears throat> both costs and revenues are linear they don't change over the activity index a second assumption is that we were able to classify all costs into fixed and variable now keep in mind Many of those mixed costs, we had to make an assumption. All right. We're also assuming that any changes in the volume is the only factor that affects the costs. Okay. So those are some of the assumptions in the cost volume profit model. Now that we had all the costs in the company classified into those costs that are variable and those costs that are fixed, then we were able to rearrange our income statement. We didn't change the sales. We didn't change the net income. We just rearranged the expenses. Those expenses that were variable and changed in total in direct proportion with changes in the sales activity were classified and 
netted against sales activity to give us the contribution margin. And those costs that are fixed had to be covered by the contribution margin in order for the company to produce a net income. So now you know the contribution margin and the contribution margin income statement. So here are the uh, factors regarding the statement, selling price 500. Notice they always give you the unit selling price, the unit variable cost, total fixed. They don't give you the contribution margin, so you have to figure that out. So when you do the income statement, the CVP income statement is called cost, volume, profit. You have sales of 800 on 1,600 camcorders. You have variable costs of 480. Now the 480, if there's a 10% increase in the sales, there'll be a 10% increase in the variable costs. So we net those two, they move together. And we just focus on the contribution margin. There would also be a 10% increase in the contribution margin. And the contribution margin is available to cover my fixed costs. And in this case, I have 320, which is 120 more than I need to cover my fixed costs. So my net income is 120. Now the contribution margin per unit is simply the unit selling price, 500, minus the unit variable costs of 300. And that gives me a contribution margin per unit of 200. Now, if I look back at my CVP statement, I can express the CVP in terms of total sales or per unit, 500. The variable cost then is 300. Now, if I'm only selling 1,000 camcorders, then my total sales would be 500,000. My variable cost would be 300,000. And my contribution margin would be 200, or in this case, per unit, 200. And how many units would I need to break even? Well, at 1,000 units times $200 per unit gives me enough to cover my fixed costs, and therefore I have a zero profit. The next unit I sell beyond the, the thousand, which is my break even in units, that 200 contribution per unit is no longer needed to cover my fixed costs, therefore it is profit. And that's how the contribution margin per unit is expressed. We also can express this in terms of a ratio. Now, a ratio always means a percentage of sales or selling price. So this is a contribution margin ratio. That means it's the contribution margin as a percentage of sales or selling price. So this time we're going to express it. We can express it either in total sales, total contribution. We get the same ratio as we would with contribution margin per unit divided by the unit selling price. In this case, it's 40%. So that means every uh, dollar we sell, 60% goes to cover the variable cost, 40% is left over for the contribution margin. So again, when I look at my CVP statement, and I can express this now in percentages, sales is always 100%. If the variable cost is 40%, then, or variable, I'm sorry, if the contribution margin is 40%, then the variable cost is 60. So now if we wanna look at a change and how that happens. Okay, so what effect would a 200 unit increase in sales be? Now keep in mind, my break even was a thousand units. So now I am going to do a thousand two hundred. So if my selling price is five hundred, then my total sales moves from five hundred to six hundred. My per unit remains the same. The variable cost is three hundred, and that's sixty percent of sales. So now with the change, if I have sales of six hundred thousand, my variable cost then would be 360,000 
because the variable cost is 60% of sales. Another way of looking at it is that it increased by, well, 100,000, 20%. Now, the contribution margin is 240, but notice the percent of sales has always remained the same. The new fixed cost, 240, so with an increase in sales of 100,000, my profit will increase 40,000. Notice percent of the increase in sales. The sales increased 100, the contribution margin is 40% of 100, which is 40,000. And if I'm beyond break even, then that contribution margin is profit. So again, we're talking, let's go back and do the break even point. That is the level of activity where the total amount of sales revenue equal both fixed and variable costs together. And we do this with the contribution margin and we express break even in two different ways, units, and in sales dollars. <clears throat> now, at break-even point, the contribution margin must equal total fixed costs. All right. Now, it can be calculated either Doctor? by contribution margin per unit Sorry, or contribution ratio. Well, if my I want to express, I my want to my, my break-even point my is, uh, in uh, units, then I divide the fixed costs by the contribution margin per unit. And my answer is in units. So the fixed costs are 200,000. Contribution margin per unit is 200. Therefore, my break even in units is 1,000 units. If I wanted to express my break even in sales dollars, well, then I use the contribution margin ratio. I divide the fixed costs by the contribution margin ratio, and my answer is in dollars. So the break even, a thousand units or $500,000. Keep in mind, a thousand units times. $50 a unit is 500,000. So I can express the same thing, but in two different ways, one in units and one in dollars. So if you are asked to calculate it in units, make sure you use the contribution margin per unit. If you are asked to calculate it in dollars, make sure you use the contribution margin ratio. All right, we're going to go through an example. Lombardi Company has a unit selling price of 400, variable costs of 240. Notice they will not tell you what the contribution margin is because that's a management way of looking at this data. Fixed costs of 180. Compute the break even. We're going to do it mathematically and then contribution. So the break even is going to be that level of sales minus variable costs, minus fixed costs, will equal zero net income. So the number of units I sell times $400 per unit, minus the number of units I sell times 240 variable costs, minus the fixed costs gives me zero profits. When I rearrange this, 160 Q, well, that's sales minus variable costs. That's my contribution margin. Uh, minus I, then I figure that Q is 1,128. Now this should be an equal sign up here, 180. But that's mathematically, I'd like for you to do it using the contribution margin. It's very simple. Fixed cost divided by the contribution margin per unit, and you've got the break even in units, all right? So that's the break even, that's zero profit. And that's, that's fine, a company needs to know the level of sales so that they can begin to make a profit beyond that level of sales. And so now we're gonna look at what we call the target net income. A company wants to determine 
the level of sales necessary to achieve in order to earn a specific net income. It can be determined using the mathematical equation, but we're going to be using the contribution margin. Again, this can be expressed in terms of sales units or in sales dollars. Mathematically, the required sales is the minus variable cost minus fixed cost equals my target net income. So if I had a situation before where I had variable uh, selling price of 500, variable cost of 300, fixed cost of 200,000, well, then the required sales would be 500 times X minus 300 times X, our quantity equals 200. I add the target net income to my fixed costs. So basically, the formula is there in red. Fixed cost plus target net income. And I want my answer in units. So I divide by the contribution margin per unit. And that's exactly what we do with the contribution margin technique. Fixed cost plus whatever I want for net income. I need enough contribution margin to cover my fixed and then give me 120,000. And I'm earning $200 in contribution margin on each unit I sell. Therefore, how many units do I need to sell? Well, the required sales in units is 1,600 units. If I want it in dollars, fixed cost plus target net income, that doesn't change, divided by contribution margin ratio, percentage. And my answer is 800,000 in required sales dollars. So, Determining any amount of net income is very simple. Once a company managers understand their total costs in fixed and variable terms, and they can determine what the contribution margin is, sales minus those variable costs gives me the contribution margin. Now this contribution margin is very useful to managers in predicting break even and predicting contribution margin, uh, break even target net income. It's also very useful in setting selling prices and determining product mix and determining which product to produce. Okay, so the target net income is simply added to the fixed cost. That's all there is to that. Now, one last concept when regards to this, and this is called the margin of safety. This is either the actual sales the company is doing right now, minus the break even point, or the sales the company expects to do in the future minus what they know they need to break even. So a company is always aware of what their break even point is. Now we're looking beyond the break even point and we're comparing the actual sales or expected sales that we have in excess of what we need to break even. This is called a cushion. All right, because you see, the economy can change rather dramatically. We have seen this, have we not, with this pandemic. Sales can go down quite a bit in a company. And that would have a major impact on their profits. So you see, determining the size of this cushion for a company gives us an idea of how risky that company's profits are to changes in the level of business activity. For example, let's say I have two companies very similar. Let's assume they both have a break-even point of a thousand units. Well, one company is selling 
1,200 units currently, and the other company is selling 1,500 units. So which company is at greater risk? Well, the one selling 1,200 units because all sales have to change is by 200 units, and that company no longer is at break even. So if sales went down by that, the company that's selling 1,500 um, has a higher or greater cushion and therefore can be considered to be less riskier than the other company. Now, this margin of safety is expressed in terms, I expressed it in units, but generally it's expressed in terms of dollars, but most often by a ratio. And remember, the ratio is percentage of sales, so margin of safety is that percentage of sales. So now, when we look at it in terms of actual sales of this company being 750, and the break-even sales being 500, then the margin of safety in dollars is 250,000. The company, that margin of safety is computed though in terms of percentage, and you simply take the margin of safety in dollars and divide that by sales, either actual sales or expected sales and you have a margin of safety ratio of 33%. Of course, investors who have or look at companies, look at the margin of safety. So sales would have to fall 33% before this company is no longer profitable. It is falling below the break-even sales. You compare that to another company that has a margin of safety of 45%. And so that's how the margin of safety is most often expressed. In terms, of course, sales or dollars, that is the actual sales in excess of what I need to break even, and then percentage, that actual amount of margin of safety as a percentage of actual sales. This concludes the lecture on cost, volume, profit. Now this module we have used, assuming that the company only sells one product or provides one service. There are not many companies that do that. In the next module, we're going to take the cost, volume, profit model and adjust it for companies that sell more than one product. So we bring in the idea of sales mix.